Hey everyone, Shark here with another 1v1 for you, this time on the match Pacino Stalemate. This replay was submitted by a subscriber who's looking for some additional perspective and feedback on his play, and what we got is a really exciting game with consistent action throughout. Playing as the Axis, we have Schur coming from the USA. He's the number 619 ranked DAC player, and he locks in the Italian Infantry Battle Group. And then playing as the Allies, we have Terpian Profile, also from America, ranked number 622 at the USF, playing as the Armored Battle Group. As you can see, pretty similar ranks and ELOs, and so what you've got is a knockdown drag out match uh, for quite a while. And there's a lot of great gameplay here, uh, and so what I'm looking forward to most is the post-match discussion, and then any comments you all might have so we can help these guys take their game to the next level. With that, we'll roll on to the match. All right, everyone. So we have Sure, starting at the, uh, the north side of the map here, Pacino Stalemate. Uh, playing as the DAC, he's going to immediately get a Kratschitzen out to go along with his Panzer Pioneers. And then we've got Terpene Profile on the south side of the map, the top of the screen. Uh, he's going, he's already locked in his armored battle group. He's got a scout, building an engineer, and he's uh, getting his barracks out. And then for sure, we see he's already locked in Italian Infantry, the, the Glossatory Commander. Uh, so expect to see some infantry play from him as well. Prod shoots in going right to the central fuel. So one thing I like to see at the start of 1v1s is he obviously hasn't clicked just on the point. He clicked to a spot in the circle. Uh, if he knows, if you know where you're going to take this crowd shoots into cap next, then you can orient it in the right direction. So like, okay, he's capping off to the right. He could have had it sitting here facing that way to decrease the amount of time. How much time does it actually save you? Uh, you know, I don't really know. Uh, but it's a little bit, and while the game is early and you have only a couple units on the map, uh, there's not an insane micro tax for that kind of activity. So that's why I like to do that early on. All right, so now you got Terpene. He's got his Jeep out. He hasn't gone for the vehicle veterancy yet, so he can't cap, but it's hunting for this crowd shoots in. This is in good to see this like really aggressive play. Lots of mobility. Sure is on it though with the crowd shoots in and backs up pretty quickly. The Jeep chases, uh, but is gonna end up stopping when it runs into these Panzer Pioneers. And now with a half track on the field, uh, sure will be able to push off this Jeep. The half track's frontal armor is uh, much better than the Jeep and much better than the crowd shoots in. So he'll be able to push that Jeep back. Although he, he doesn't pursue right away. Meanwhile, you've got engineers putting in some wire. You got one rifle squad out on the field. Scouts are capping up the, the munitions point on the west side of the map. The rifle squad just now coming out. That makes sense with the Jeep on the field as well. Sure, playing very mechanized. I like this using the Panzer unit to just cap up the high munition points. And the crowd shoots in already back at full health thanks to the self repair. And this is how you can tell that he just clicked on the point to capture because it goes right to the center and stops there. Which usually means when you give it a follow-on command, there's a, a few second delay while it gets off of the point, backs up, and then goes where it needs to go. Alright, so here in the center we've got Jeep, Rifle Squad, and Engineers. Uh, Panzer Pioneer is probably going to do a fair amount of damage from this garrison. Engineers with their SMG is not going to do much at all. Rifles and Engineers focusing this half track, but it's not taking much damage at this range. Now they're focusing the Panzer Pioneers, it looks like. I'd like to see the Engineers move up a little closer to make use of their SMGs, especially after the last patch, getting a slight buff to their close range damage. And there, the Panzer Pioneers retreat. Meanwhile, Crowdshit's in capping up some fuel on the flank. Not enough to actually get it for themselves, but enough to decap. Oh, well, Panzer Grenadiers in the center. Yep, and they're forced to retreat. That's not a good engagement for them. Good use of the Jeep early on in the game uh, to basically not bleed manpower. And to be honest with you, like only a handful of casualties, only three casualties for the DAC and one uh, for the Americans. So not a lot of manpower bleed on either side. The key to dealing with the DAC, especially early, is to inflict a lot of, of manpower bleed so they can't get their upgrades. Sure is already teched up, and now he's going for Assault Grenadiers, so... Uh, interesting choice when you had the option for Glossatory. 
uh, assault grenadiers do much better close range, obviously, but they can still get overwhelmed by rifles, uh, and then they don't have the same anti-vehicle utility. All right, so here we go. Nice. Driving the crowd shoots an end to prevent the decap. Smart play there. Well, the Jeep can now capture rifles in the Jeep on the east side of the map, looking at the double muni points. And the Jeep's going to decap the VP. So Turpine will have some good VP pressure here with the triple cap. Crowd shoots and going for the deep decap on the fuel. This is an interesting thought. I think I would rather see him hit the cutoff here. Ooh, these scouts in trouble. Half track, no mines down to stop it. And the, the clown car with the flame pyros runs down the scouts. Not a huge loss for Terpene, but the scouts do provide a lot of mid-game utility. Now another squad of assault grenadiers on the way out, for sure. Terpene's jeep kind of hanging out here. Uh, a little bit. There's a lot going on on the map, but that's the uh, the other difference is the really high level 1v1 players, there's never, uh, you know, a dull moment for their units. They're always being employed. So there you go. But again, I'd like to see him move it off to the side here. He's probably going to use it to then capture this double muni point to set it up here and have it prepared. Meanwhile, setting up for a large engagement over on uh, this side of the map. Dak doing a little bit of capping. Can we get back to Rifles in cover. Crowd Schuston has really good sight range when stationary. Now the Dak infantry are going to push up to the center. Flame half track runs off uh, the engineers. Panzer is on the field now, so he's trying to be prepared for infantry or for uh, vehicles. Meanwhile, the infantry support center upgrade pops, and the captain gets out on the field. Rifles kind of taking this engagement piecemeal. They're almost certainly going to lose this one and be forced to retreat. Yep, there they go. Jeep's now in a bad spot. No snare, but the captain's also not going to be able to do a whole lot of damage, and he himself is at risk here. If the assault grenadiers get on his retreat path, they could run him down. I think he, he'll get out in time here. Half track's going to push. We'll do a bunch of damage, but it'll be forced to back off. Now, Jeep challenging the crowd shoots in on the uh, the medium fuel here in the center of the map. Really burning down the crowd shoots in, but won't be fast enough to prevent the decap. Oh, the crowd hits a mine. Very, very well placed mine. You love that trade. Oh, but this Jeep's done. Panzer Jaegers in a half track. And I love that combination in the, the late, uh, like early game, mid game because of its ability to hunt down light vehicles. Even this Greyhound that Terpene's now queued up is at risk there. Assault Grenadiers. Now this is where they're potentially in trouble. These rifles, yep, they're going to do a lot of damage. Wonky retreat path. And a couple models will drop, but the squad's probably going to be okay. Good use of the engineers of the flamethrower to force the DAC units out of cover. But in the meantime, the DAC player has done a lot of resource damage. So not much on the cap side, but he's got all of the fuels and he's decapping the last of the uh, the US players fuel up here. This may be the first uh, vehicle we see for or last vehicle we see for a long time uh, for Terpene. He's got three command points available to him and this is where you like to see make use of those. Uh, you know, the war machine upgrade, which he, I think he needs one more to unlock, but that's super valuable. Um, even getting through the wrecker that can end up making your vehicles much cheaper so staying on top of your command points uh it can be really really helpful yeah he clearly went for the vehicle veterancy upgrade panzer jaeger is going to hop into cover here and this is not a good matchup for the greyhound terpene wisely kind of keeps it in the back using the rifles to put pressure on the half track and now with the panzer jaeger separated from their half track Rifles here in a good spot. Greyhound now, yep, gonna protect the rifles from the flame pyos. Must not have touched grenades. No sticky comes out. Half track will get away. Oh, and now here comes infantry push. And Terpene again forced to retreat his rifles. 
sure is floating a lot of fuel now. Uh, and so n if I'm terpene, I'm getting an AT gun or two out because I'm concerned about some pretty significant vehicles hitting the field here shortly. Yeah. Those engineers not able to hold up against the assault grenadiers. The Greyhound's a good counter. Uh, needs to be very proactive. He does have a med truck. Sure has a med truck in his base. That's probably why he retreated those assault cranes so they didn't bleed. And he's going for the Panzer Army Command now. Captain decapping outside of the map. And actually a rifle squad push up in the center decapping Schur's primary fuel. Greyhound takes a little bit of damage from the Panzer Jaegers, but he's got the upgraded skirts on it, so uh, it's able to limp away. And sure, he's got a good setup over here on these high munitions points. Well, he kind of refits his army in the rear, repairing these half-tracks. Be interested to see if he goes for the upgraded half-track. He does have, he's floating a little bit of manpower. That could be really helpful getting some mortar tracks to start punishing uh, the allied infantry. And here we go. So he goes for field repairs uh, as his next upgrade rather than the wrecker. Yeah, you don't normally see the Wrecker in 1v1s, but man, it's fun when it comes out. Rossatori hit the field now. And sure, playing a very anti-infantry build here, uh, which is going to work out for him since Turpin has four rifle squads on the field. And uh, he went with ISC, so he can upgrade those infantry, but he can't. He doesn't have access to Rangers, Paras, or Commandos. So they are not going to scale as well as the DAC infantry into the late game. Engineers coming up. Uh, but the Panzer Grins will hop out of the building before the flamethrower hits. Assault Grenadiers push off the Captain, but the Greyhound's in a nice spot to counter them. Rossatori now pushing the center. Oh, Assault Grenadiers use the smoke to keep the Greyhound from doing a lot of damage. I oh, mean, this is really frustrating when it shoots right into the wall. Yeah. Now, Rossatori pushing the center. And the rifle is obviously forced out of the building. Even three, these three rifle squads are going to struggle to deal with the Guasatori uh, with that flame upgrade and all of these DAC infantry on the flank. And then the Greyhound can't really support as much as it would like with the Panzerjägers there. Guasatori do get chunked down a little bit, but they do a lot of damage in the process. Good micro of the Greyhound to keep it out of the effective range of these Panzer Jaegers who retreat. I, you know, with the med truck on the field, I would like to see sure bring that up forward rather than leave that in his base and try to maintain a little bit more field presence. He could have soft retreated back here, healed up all of his guys, reinforced them, and kept them close. Retreating back to your base when you don't need to gives your opponent a lot of room to breathe. And Terpene also has access to healing his base. And so that's an advantage that the DAC can have with their mobile med truck uh, that the Americans need to get a half track out to, to emulate. So I think as much as possible, you want to see people make use of that ability. Second Greyhound out on the field now. And I think this is a good counter for the way the DAC are built. Um, obviously P3 coming. There's a single... Uh, AT gun on the field. Teching for BARs. I I don't haven't seen the grenades, and I think at this point you need the grenades to deal with this P3 and and these half tracks. I love this mechanized push. This is a really really. This is the DAC played as intended right here. Good push. Rifles immediately on retreat. Greyhounds in the rear, but they're not going to be able to do a whole lot to this P3. BARs hit. Rifles, I like this, the drop in support to cover the AT gun. Oh, this rifle squad, though. Oh, they are going to get annihilated by these Wasatori. P3 on the retreat path and assault grenadiers. Yeah. Rifle squad down. BAR dropped. Uh, if the Assault Grins pick that up, that's a huge boon. Alright, and here comes first AT gun shot. P3 forced to back off. 
Good flank here with the Greyhounds. Rifles forced to retreat, but they could. The Greyhounds can do a lot of damage to these infantry here. Alright, the Salkrens on retreat. Glossatory throw the smoke. I like that to try to block the sight line. This P3 is at less than half health, so it's going to have to re retreat and repair a little bit. Sure, it's got the manpower for some upgrades. Uh, and actually, so does Terpene's got quite a bit of manpower out. So he's going for another rifle squad. I think with the two Greyhounds on the field, he's got plenty of anti-infantry power, especially that's biased against the way the DAC team is built. I think another AT gun is going to be necessary to help deal with all these vehicles. Sure, doing a good job of counter-capping. I love this smoke uh, to prevent units from taking damage while decapping. That's really smart. Sure, gone. He's upgraded the L640 light light tanks. I. It's too late in the game for those. An Italian howitzer team is deploying. Oh wow, he got out. Got out the toad howitzer. That's interesting and very early. Right. Rifles versus assault grenadiers. He's taking grenades now. So if Sure's not careful, this half track could also go down. Oh, AT gun hits the half track is almost certainly done here. One rifle squad very close to dying, but they'll get away. Assault grenadiers will also uh, retreat away. And the Panzerjäger is forced out. That's one of the two half tracks dealt with. Engineers, meanwhile, forced off by Panzergrens uh, on the east side of the map. And those engineers at this point are needed more for repairs than anything else. So, all right, Greyhound moving to to push off the Panzer Grenadiers. This late in the game, I think, as much as you can, keeping the Greyhounds together, because they can chunk a quick retreat. And this this pre grand squad is just going to try to get up. Yep, they they fake the snare and then they back up. This retreat, I I think, you're really lacking field presence when you retreat that quickly. P3 pushing through the center, trying, really, I think he's going for that Greyhound there, but he ends up finding a couple rifle squads. AT gun's out of position. It looks like it'll think about rotating, but then stay stay in place. Rifle versus Assault Grenadiers. Ooh, the one rifle squad taking a lot of damage. But it looks like Sight Block will keep them from going down. Assault Grenadiers forced to retreat. Grenade comes in a little late to catch a retreat path, so all the infantry will get away. Now here's the upside to having the four rifle squads. As you see, Terpene doing a really good job pushing constantly on this VP. Spreading out the map. P3 on the flank here. Uh, unsupported. You're kind of wondering what the thought process is here. All right, here's the first howitzer shot. Bombarding the base with the howitzer, you know, it's a technique. It, it borders on cheesy, uh, but it can be really effective. It's just, it can be very frustrating to play against. Oh, hitting the med tent as well. All right, now a Scott out for Terpene. So if he has, if he can double down on the AT, with that Scott, he should be able to chunk down some of these infantry. I think that's a really good counter to this infantry heavy build uh, from sure. couple of rifle squads challenging some Panzergers and Assault Grenadiers. Greyhound looking for the P3 on the opposite side of the map. And now rifles decapping that central fuel. Here's a grenade. Assault Grens. Ooh! I think the that's a good time for a grenade when your opponent's microing in another part of the map. Really, really well done to hit those Assault Grens really hard. These assault friends here also getting focused down. They're forced to retreat. Greyhound damage, but the AT gun in the back doing a lot of damage to this P3. P3 is not moving. The focus sight on the AT gun. I assume you'd use it. Man, crazy that the P3 is still alive. It's a lot of opportunity to knock that out. You have rifles on the flank. Maybe the AT gun will get one more shot off. Doesn't look like it. Oh. Greyhound looks like it could go down here to the Panzerjägers, but it'll back out in time. So, interesting approach here. You've got Terpene pushed up in the middle. Uh, he almost knocked out the P3, but not quite. 
infantry push on the west side of the map here. Relatively successful for the DAC. So they're going to back cap the VP. Oh, Panzerjägers find the Scott. This is really, really bad news for the Scott. Kind of caught out of position. Going to eat a lot of damage. In this case, if you throw the Panzerjägers in that half track, you could potentially run that Scott down. It'll eventually get away. Greyhound's going to eat a lot of damage as well. Another P3 hits the field. And I'm worried for Turpin about his lack of AT. If I had to guess, based on his build and the, the fact that he doesn't have a tier 4 out, I think he's going to go for the easy 8 call-in, which makes sense at this point. That half-track's going to get away. In fact, the rifles need to focus on these guasses and... <laughs> Oh, here comes a P3. R rifles forced to retreat. Greyhound AT gun coming back out. The Greyhound's still very damaged, and so it's not going to be able to push as hard as it would like. One P3 back in the base. Artillery still bombarding the base here. And I guess that's the best use for it, especially because Terpene's not playing with a bunch of team weapons. It's super frustrating to deal with in a, in a 1v1. All right, so Terpene's going to get out of Chaffee to bite him some time until he gets the seven VPs he needs for the easy eight call-in. Rifles, these assault grenades, even with the BARs and the uh, the Vet 1 ability, they're going to bleed quite a bit here. Run Rifle Squad force off. Yep, and they're forced to retreat. You can't deal with the massive allied infantry and then the Greyhound in support. The you know, Terpene's done a good job keeping these Greyhounds alive. They're going to continue to chunk down an infantry, especially as they gain vet. The thing is, he's really got to worry about the combination of the Panzerjägers and the P3s. But again, I think Schur's, his only real weakness that he showed so far is this willingness to just come back to his base to kind of set up here. I think he's wasting a lot of opportunity to maintain field presence, and he's giving Terpene some breathing room. Oh. Scott comes in, starts to bombard the base, and the P3s are just going to run this thing over almost immediately. Chaffee's available to support. Greyhound's at risk now as well if it doesn't get out. Chaffee gets a shot off and goes straight into the dirt. Greyhound goes down, so I guess I spoke too soon. They have Captain Artillery coming in. That's not going to do much to this uh, DAC force. Ooh, P3s running down the Captain and the Rifle Squad. A T gun out of position here. Chaffee available to support. Captain goes down. What a push. Greyhound honestly should stay out of this engagement. A T gun gets wiped here. Chaffee available to support. But that Greyhound's gonna go down to the P3s. Where's the other AT gun? It's off on the flank here, I think. Yep, there it is. It's setting up. Rifle's gonna snare. Oh, uh, actually. Do they, they don't have the munitions for it. There it is. There's the snare. Both P3s very, very low health. One more AT gunshot. But it won't get off. Engineers go down. Holy cow. What a push from Sure here. One P3 goes down to a mine. Well-placed mine on the flank. Rifles here trying to hold the center are going to get pushed off. As well as these... Easy 8 unlocked. Rifles with poured on them against the uh, assault grounds with their tactical assault. And the rifle's going to lose this, forced to retreat. Oh, this rifle squad here at risk too. But it doesn't look like the Panzer Pios will shift fire, so it'll get away. Panzer Jaegers knock out the AT gun, decreed AT gun. And now, if I'm worried about. This artillery piece fire on the base. Ugh. Good idea with the grenade, but it's not going to do much more than token damage. Alright, you see this rifle squad kind of attack moving forward. Might be the right approach with the short range focus of the uh, Glossatory. And there you go. Now you see him starting to spread them out. Sure is pulled back. He's got... Uh, he's updated the self-repair kits on his vehicles so that P3 can hold the center and eventually uh, heal itself fully. 
terping five rifle squads out now, and he's using that to maintain uh, pressure kind of across the field. Another P3 coming out for sure. And I feel like most of his manpower at this point has gone into upgrades and reinforcing losses. Uh, sure is definitely winning the KD battle, 77 to 45. And to be honest, I'm not sure what Terpene needs to do to win here. I would say he's very clean trades, but that's kind of obvious. So I think in all honesty, what he needs to do is keep whittling down the number of P3s. So there's never more than one or two on the field at a time and slowly build up his own combat power. Big engagement in the center. Rifles forced out by the flame uh, pioneers. P3 is going to push. It takes a little bit of damage from the AT gun. Rifles holding the territory. First, Easy 8 hits the field. One P3 snared. Second hits the field. Yep, and the the rifles need to retreat. Or at risk of getting burned down. But P3 is on the tree path. The same time as small engagement over on the flank. Assault grins could go down here. Both players very much focused on the center of the map. These Guasatori here, yep, they push off the rifles, but they take some damage from the Easy 8. Now, if Terpene pushes these Assault Grenadiers here, uh, he might get the wipe anyway. Yep, Assault Grenadiers go down on the flank. Barrage coming in, knocks out the uh, ambulance tent or the med tent. Doing some damage to these rifle squads. Panzer Jaegers hop in the church. Not sure what upgrade, that one upgrade he went for here. Now here comes the P3. A lot of rifles in support. And now a mortar half track. So good late game conversion of the half tracks. It's a little expensive, but if you bring more, oh, look at that. Napalm onto the AT gun. He's gonna clear that vet to AT gun. Yep. P3's chunk down a little bit. One still has the engine crit on it. Oh, the rifles on the deep flank knock out the Panzerjäger squad. Great pickup for Terpene. Building another AT gun. He's got this Easy 8 out. I imagine that's going to be his plan for the foreseeable future is to continue to push Easy 8s, which are a really good counter to both the Panzer 3s and the infantry heavy build here. Both P3s back to full health. Easy 8 waiting on engineers. Oh man, the, the constant base bombardment. Tough to deal with. Especially if it knocks out a base building. And even pulling your Easy 8 back to repair it is risky with that big artillery piece. So flipping the perspective back around here. Sure, he's got... He's about to get a triple cap back on. He's had at least one of the high muni points for a significant period of time. He's got 430 munitions floated. Uh, you've got your Guasatori that can lay mines. Man, both squads of Assault Grands went down. Panzerjägers went down, so he's lost some infantry. And now he's got an 88 coming out. I would like to use these munitions, right? Obviously, he's gonna... He's got 12 command points. He can... Uh, upgrade to the the Obiche barrage. The oh, there's the demo going down. Efforts, so the but use those munitions. I mean, he doesn't even have the top gunners on his P3s. Something to keep in mind. All right, so he's, he finally upgraded for the Obiche barrages. Panzer pioneers over here finding some mines as they try to cap at the munitions point. The rifles are going to win this engagement if they push it. Here comes the flak 36. Wonder where he puts that. Because this map, you can use it to essentially lock down one side or the other against vehicles. But interest, I, I'm interested in seeing where he focuses that. Alright. P3s decide they're going to make a push. Really, really horrendous timing. Just as Terpene Profile pushes on this side. Rifle Squad standing on the demo charge. Glossatory. First shot from the, uh, the EZ-8 whiffs. Ooh, there you go. A couple Guasatori go down. Two Panzer 3s can challenge this rifle squad on retreat. 
Now, Turpy's done a good job of laying mines, but it looks like they are going to be aggressive and try to focus this in. One AT gun and the EZ-8 are going to pivot to deal with that. Man, it's really a shame that Demo Charge wasn't used. Oh, this rifle squad chunked way down. Oh, but the artillery piece gets the final kill on that infantry squad. Oh, another infantry squad taking some serious damage. Panzer III is in the base area. AT gun here to support. One P3 barely damaged. Ooh, and it goes down to the combination of the EZ-8 and AT gun. The same time, good push by Turkmen here on the flank. Motor half track tries to prevent engineers from capturing the center, and it will, using the incendiary round. Yeah, and he he still can't figure out where to put this 88. Good infantry push here for Turpine, taking control of the west side of the map, and now the center. And here's the 88 being towed around as it flips right through the building. P3 pushing up through the center here. Meanwhile, infantry push here. So, good use of a double push, but Turpine's all over it. Ooh, engineer squad barely gets away. Yeah, I don't know if the 88 is the right call here. At this point, Turpine only has one easy 8 on the field. You know he's going to get more. But so far, it's a huge investment into manpower and fuel that hasn't yielded any any real results. And here comes the easy 8 challenge. 88 still not on the field. Still not put down. And now it's going to uh, get plumped down. It's starting to rotate around, but the EZ-8 is going to back out and protect. Oh, here comes the Obicha Barrage. This is going to hurt. Yeah, 1AT gun cleared. And EZ-8 needs to be very careful about its path. AT gun annihilated. But the other AT gun will get out, as will the EZ-8. And now all of this rifle squad bleed, preventing Turpin from getting his second easy eight out. Black 88 set up in the rear. I I think for Turpin he's got to, or excuse me, for sure he's got to pick a side with this and say I'm gonna lock down this side of the map. I'm gonna throw the 88 here and keep a squad of infantry, maybe an MG34 on it, and force the engagement to take place on the opposite side of the map so he can split it. And he's still floating a ton of munitions. If he, if This side of the map is easy enough, I think, to lock down if he wanted to. And then he can keep the fight about the center. And if he were able to position the 88 here, it could potentially support both sides. And that's just me, kind of armchair general and watching and not having to play this in real time. I have to say, I'm impressed with both players' ability to keep pressure across the map. Easy 8 being repaired by the engineers. I think if he can hold off on reinforcing for a minute, he'll be able to get a second Easy 8 out. Alright, sure, now unlock the armored reserves. With 205 fuel in the bank, I think you're going to see a Tiger here relatively soon. Turpin really needs a second Easy 8 out at a minimum to deal with that. And these Vet 2 Glossatory doing a lot of work. Rifles throw a grenade, and the bosses retreat, which I don't think they necessarily need to do, but they are at risk of getting chunked down by the EZ-8 here. Rifles force off the Panzer Grenadiers. Turpine capping and laying some mines here in the center. AT gun. I mean, if you want to be really... Yeah, you could always back this up and have it cap that point for you while it's setting up. Here comes the, uh, oh, this time the barrage on the center of the map. Ooh. Italian engineers are eager for 
Another squad of Glastory. Artillery clears the mine in the center. And and so I my guess here. Oh man. Sure got that second squad of Glossatory when he could have gotten a tiger uh with the same manpower. I don't think Sure's problem is dealing with the infantry. I think I I think the Tiger would have been the better better option here. And then a squad of Glossatory, but I, I see the thought process. Two squads of Glossatory to win the infantry engagements and then a tiger a little bit later. Uh, to put pressure on the vehicles. Supported by the 88. Could be a really dangerous combination. So here's the 88 on this side of the field. Interesting this vehicle is not self-repairing. Oh, these tow trucks in the rear. He's got enough munitions. He could just make them reinforcement trucks and move them around the map. And he's still got his med truck in the rear. Rossatory displaced by the grenade. But they're still, I think, going to win this fight with their flamers on these rifles in cover. Yeah, rifles start to bleed a little bit. The squad, this three-man squad here up. Oh, Rossatory uh, back off. This other squad of glosses. Second EZ-8 hits the field here. Rifles wisely retreat. You now, one thing you could do is put a mine on top of this uh, demo charge. That way you don't have to monitor it. Uh, and it's almost certainly gonna wipe an infantry squad that sits on it. Uh, Glossatory here, gonna take a lot of damage from the CZ-8 and they, they do eventually just retreat. Rifles versus Panzer Pios. Yep, and the rifles are gonna win this one and take control of that VP. All right, now the EZ-8 moving to the west side of the map. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This poor engineers. I'm actually shocked the demo charge didn't kill the EZ-8. So the demo charge does pay off, and I really like that. I think that's that's cheeky and a fun play, especially in a 1v1. Panzer Grand's forced to retreat by one EZ-8. Gonna have run the gauntlet here with some engineers, a second EZ-8, and a rifle squad. They don't take a ton of casualties. No additional shots. Black truck now set up on the west side of the map. And Terpene's getting the triple cap back on. So he's down to less than 100 VPs with this triple cap is in, puts him in a good spot. Sure is about a minute and a half away from the Tiger, assuming he doesn't need to reinforce too much more. Two squads of Glossatory, supported by a P3 and a Flak 36. That is a good setup, even with two easy 8s and some rifles to counter. Yeah, rifles immediately retreat. Here comes the EZ-8 to challenge the Glossatory. Just out of range of the Flak 36, it seems. Glossatory throw a smoke. Nice, I like that. Another EZ-8 push up. Again, chunking away at the other Glossatory squad. And the Flak 36 is just a little bit out of position. In fact, Sure is going to move it up. Rifle's now moving up to challenge the Glossatory capture here. Flak in a position to fire. Does a lot of damage to one of the easy 8s The Glossatory are forced off before they can cap. Meanwhile, they are Sure is capping the center VP. Now, 88 here, nothing to spot for it. Which is a shame, because it could do a lot of damage to that. We can easy 8, and here it is. Oh, no shot. Oh, the two easy 8s could do a lot of damage to the infantry if they push. Oh, and a Panzer Grand squad goes down. Now, AT gun with the rifle squad. This stuns the P3. Doing some damage here. Grenade onto the Flak 36. Does some damage, but, but not critical. I'm forced to back off, and now the easy eights can move about unchallenged. And Terpene able to get the triple cap back on. One of his easy eights pretty damaged, but his engineer squad gonna come up to repair, and he's got enough fuel and almost enough manpower for a third. 
He's about to hit critical mass here. You know, sure has got the... He's got the red idea, but he's got to push together and he's got to knock out one of these tanks before, almost like we were talking about uh, previously, before Terpene can get critical mass with these easy eights. Because now at that point, even a Tiger is not going to save him. Too many infantry casualties. I think Tiger should be available based on resources. One squad of Guasatori backs off, and here it is. All right, Tiger's on the field. So, sure has got a... I was going to say, he does have a little bit of a VP buffer to play with, but not much. So I think he needs to pick a side, and he needs to force Terpene off the field. Flak deployed here, but the EZ-8 already backs off. And the Flak, honestly, too far in the rear to really do much damage. E3 pushing against these rifles. Terpene going to capture up the center. And he's got enough resources for a third easy A. Busy microing the engagement here. Oh, rifle squad at risk of going down. Oh, a T gun plus an easy eight chunks away at the P3. Easy eight's focusing on these Wasatori. Tiger does a ton of damage to the Vet 3 rifle squad, and they retreat. And the Tiger's 88 hitting very hard. A little, you know, one sticky for a crew shock. I think in a perfect world, you try to line up two of them to get the engine crit on the Tiger. <laughs> tiger shrugs off the AT gun shot, as you'd expect. The problem now, though, for sure, is the lack of capping power. Maybe, you know, with some of the spare manpower, uh, you know, from a couple minutes ago, maybe you get out another crotchet in the cap. His army composition is good from a the perspective of winning engagements, but he's down to 25 VPs, and unless he can get on two of these quickly... Oh my goodness! One engineer squad annihilated. AT gun gonna go down here as well. Yep, it's cleared. Third easy eight hits the field. And it's too little too late for sure. Great army composition, but he's just not gonna be able to capture the VPs. And that's it. That's the game. All right. Now that I've gotten some coffee and had some time to review, we're going to go over the build order like we always do. So sure, again, locking in the Italian infantry battle group right off the rip. Goes for a Panzer Pioneer, a Karad Schutzen, a Panzer Grenadier. And then he goes to the 250 half track as well. So very mechanized early build. Uh, after he techs, he gets two assault Grenadiers out, which is an interesting choice. Uh, they're very close range infantry and they lack a little bit of the utility of the Panzer Grenadier. Um, and I don't know that it synergizes as well with the Guastatori as maybe another squad of Panzer Grenz might have. Uh, from there, he goes for a Panzer Jaeger with a half-track call-in, uses that really well, uh, gets a med truck out, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, gets a Guastatori squad, and then the first of three Panzer threes. He gives, does the Canona 105-28 howitzer and sits out in his base and uses that mainly to bombard uh, Terpene's base. Uh, he gets his, his next two Panzer threes out, then a Flak 36, uh, which we talked about in the cast, uh, a second squad of Guasatori, and then at the end of the game, a Tiger. Um, he really does end up with pretty good army composition, but he ends up losing on VPs because he doesn't have uh, really the width or the capping power to maintain control uh, against Terpene Profile's late game army. So speaking of Terpene, right, he's going to play as the U.S. Armored Battle Group, which he locks in right away. Interestingly enough, he doesn't unlock the vehicle veterancy uh, immediately, and so even though he gets a jeep out early, he goes scout, engineer, jeep. The jeep doesn't have vet one, so it can't cap right away and ends up uh, going a couple minutes before it can be used as a capping element. He then gets three rifle squads, ends up with a total of five on the field, goes for the infantry support center with the captain, uh, gets two greyhounds out as well as an AT gun, uh, then gets an M8 Scott self-propelled gun out, which I thought was interesting, and then a chaffee a second AT gun, and then finally he rounds out the match with three EZ-8 Sherman Collins. All right, so we're going to kick this off. I have a couple notes uh, for each one of the players. So for sure, focus on things he could have done to turn this one around and win, and Terpene, uh, some things he did well and some things he could fix going forward. All in all, though, really good play, really exciting play, uh, and pretty good micro. There are some little things here and there, but there's not a lot to nitpick at uh, from, you know, in, in my opinion. So First off, uh, with sure, I'd say he's floating a ton of munitions uh, for most of the game. 
And there are a couple of different uses for this. So one, if you had another squad of Panzer Grenadiers, you get them with the, the light machine gun, you get use their snares. Uh, with the Guastatori and the Panzer Pios, could be laying down mines. Um, and then also, he ended up having three of the 2.5 ton trucks at the end uh, because he towed on the flak, he towed on the uh, the howitzer. Um, you can upgrade those to med trucks. They can still tow now uh, after the last patch. So those can be really useful in maintaining field presence. Um, and so if you have three of those, then you literally put them in your back lines across the map. Like, do you really care if you lose one of them? Probably not, right? It's not your only healing point. He had the munitions to do it. And like I talked about in the cast, that prevents him from constantly backing all the way out to his base and would allow him to keep up pressure across the board, which might have actually helped him maintain VP, VP pressure in the late game. And I honestly, that, that was the biggest thing that hurt Schur in, in general was his inability to maintain wide field presence to counter the constant pushes by Terpene uh, and his rifle. So uh, that would be my first takeaway is like get that med truck out of your base um, it requires a little bit more micro, but that's okay. That's how you maintain the field presence. You keep your guys involved in the fight. You keep them topped off and reinforced and you maintain that pressure. <clears throat> the next thing that I thought was interesting was his investment into the howitzer and the 88. So the howitzer is not a bad call on a one V one map. I mean, he sat it in his base and could bombard Terpene's base. He got a couple of kills. He knocked out the med tent. Uh, and if you time those barrages, right, man, they can be devastating, but that's a significant investment. Uh, and so I think when you only have like one Panzer three out, he only had two at one time. And then one of them got knocked out by a mine instead of the howitzer having a second P three or third P three, you can start to snowball on your opponent, especially because Terpene didn't have, he only had one easy eight out at that point. Right. So getting a couple of Panzer threes to be able to kind of bounce through that, uh, might've also been really helpful. And in the 88 itself, like he really struggled with what to do with that 88 and you could see this in his inability to kind of spread out late game and, and fight back on the VP pressure. 88's not a bad idea. I think he got it out a little early. Uh, there was only one easy eight on the field. And then at that point, like, what do you do with it? How do you keep it engaged and in the fight and make it make it worthwhile? You know, like they in Co2 and then uh, at the beginning of Co3, they had an efficiency stat, which they tried to make it like how much damage the unit does versus how much it receives. The 88 was a super low efficiency unit in this game just because it was barely engaged in the fight. And I think uh, when you invest resources into something like that, you need to really make use of them. So uh, when I think about like how he turns this game around to win, um, I think really, you know, he had that really great engagement in the middle of the game. He knocked out all of Terpene's vehicles and he had them on the back foot. And then I think uh, <clears throat> with that, you have to take that and turn that into into VP pressure. Um, and so I think if you're going to if you're going to use the 88, I think you use that to lock down one side of the map. All right. So you have a couple of P3s out. Maybe you keep a squad of Guasatori near it. Right. So they can lay mines. They can fend off infantry um, An 88 with a squad of Guasatori vetted up can essentially hold off one side of the map, one VP while the rest of your army maneuvers uh, relatively easily. So that's one option. If he had instead of gotten a second or a third squad of Panzer Grens out early rather than the assault grenadiers, I think they scale a little bit better. The rifles want to fight at range. The P Grens can fight, or I'm sorry, the rifles want to fight up close. The P Grens can stay at range. And so you can start to turn some of those infantry engagements. You can snare vehicles when they come in. Um, so the assault Grens were good, but they were dead by the end of the game. And so you missed out on a lot of that utility. And I think really that's it. Uh, if he keeps his P3s alive, he gets three or four of them. He can do a lot of damage. At the end of the day, the game was really close. I would argue he probably had the better army composition at the end of the game in terms of like how how well you could win engagements. Uh, but what he didn't have was the ability to control VPs, and that's what cost him. Uh, for Terpene here. So first off, great use of mines. I love seeing the engineer out early. Um, the mines, the <laughs> mines actually killed one of the two Panzer threes. So he had that disastrous mid-game engagement. He lost all of his vehicles. If both those P3s get away, this is probably a different story. And sure, probably wins this game. But that mine on the other VP, P3 hits it. And now the trade looks not even, but a little bit more palatable. And Terpene was able to uh, snowball that into uh, VP control. One thing I did note, he got the ISC out, but he didn't use any of the ISC upgrades. Right. Um, even the the munitions cost reduction one, that one's super cheap. It's like 100 manpower, 15 fuel, 
And when you have five infantry squads and they all need to throw uh, BARs, they all need to throw stickies, uh, that ends up paying for itself, you know, a million times over. And I think there were a couple spots in the mid game where he wanted to throw a sticky and didn't have the munis for it. Uh, a little bit of that investment and he definitely had the fuel, I think would have been helpful. <clears throat> the other thing is if you're facing a very like anti-infantry build from the DAC, the survivability upgrade definitely doesn't hurt. And then also the advanced logistics will allow you to keep uh, other things on the field for a lot longer. Um, I think he did a really good job uh, using his infantry to screen for his vehicles, especially in the late game. Uh, keeping the rifles out in front so he knew where the Flak 88 was meant that the Flak couldn't knock out one of his easy eights and get a clean trade, right? So there was one, took a couple of hits, was really damaged, but he knew where it was. He was screening with the infantry and the easy eight was able to stay alive and pick fights against uh, DAC infantry units that couldn't counter it. He also obviously did a great job keeping up the VP pressure. Right, He had the five rifle squads, he had the captain, even though he lost his scouts early, and he was constantly counter capping, um, which is the way you have to play against a DAC player that can eventually get out of Tiger. You don't want to try to win based on engagements. You want to make sure that you keep uh, the Axis player on the back foot from a VP perspective so that you can play a little bit more defensive and pick and choose the engagements that you want. Um, at the end of the day, I think the reason he was able to win this most of all was after that that kind of mid-game engagement where he almost lost it, uh, he had a lot of clean trades going into the late game. So uh, knocking out vehicles, knocking out infantry, the assault grand squads, uh, getting good two-on-ones <clears throat> against the Guastatori to keep them from, from being Terminators, uh, using his vehicles against the Guastatori uh, to kind of whittle them down and turn engagements, and then just keeping that pressure up, like really good, clean micro uh, towards the end of the game uh, to keep uh to keep sure from really pushing back on it and you saw that tiger hit the field did a lot of damage but it was too little too late so uh really impressive uh for terpene um that is all that i had in my notes again really looking forward to anything else that you all see please throw it in the comments um i would love to be able to kind of talk about this one some more this is a great game i also looking forward to doing more uh games and casts like this so if you're really looking for feedback um, these games are awesome to watch and awesome for people to learn from. So please send them in. Uh, and that's, that's all for me. Everyone have a great night and we'll see you in the next one.